Hi friends, welcome back. So today I'm going to be showing you guys a tutorial on a 6x6 six six album. I've had several people ask me to show them how to use the 6x6 six six paper packs. So I am going to just show you guys quickly how to make um, a very, very quick album. So um, so the album itself is, um, I will link I, where I got this, I will link below. I did not design this one. Um, I have designed these before on my own, but I like her pages better. So that's why I'm going to be showing you the pages. And I can't remember the, what is it? It's Crafty Creations. L, I think it's LM Crafty Creations, but I'll link it below. So this is just medium weight chipboard, and I actually get this on Amazon, and I will link this below as well, but it's just, it's really nice, and it's actually, I think it's cheaper to get it on Amazon than anywhere else, so that's where I get it. So um, what you need for the cover is you're going to need two of these cut at six and three quarters. So I'm going to cut it first at six and three quarters by six and three quarters. So this is your, this is your album your cover page, pages I mean <clears throat> so six and three quarters by six and three quarters and you do need two of those so I'm going to cut another one at six and three quarters and I apologize if this is um if my camera is a little blurry it has sometimes it has a hard time focusing with plain colors um, so that's why I'll just try to talk you through it as well um, let's see six and three quarters by six and three quarters and then you're going to need one for your binding, so one binding piece, um, six and three quarters by two and three quarters. So I'm just going to cut this at two and three quarters. There we go. And then I'll cut this at uh, six and three quarters as well. So this is actually going to hold several pictures. It's actually larger than you think. Just because it's small doesn't mean it won't hold a bunch. This will hold quite a bit. So that is our; those are our cover pieces. So this is, what, like I said, you guys. Once you learn how to make the the covers, it's super easy to make any size that you want because it's all the same technique. It's just going to be different sizes. So next, I'm going to go ahead and grab um, my cover, my linen paper. Okay guys, I'm using this artisan paper again. This is from Country Craft Creations and it, it's actually my absolute favorite just because it's very thick and durable and you can, once you score it and whatnot, it doesn't rip. It has a harder time to rip. So I really like it for that reason. Um, so I'm gonna grab my tape here. Oh, so these are cut at, I guess I should tell you that. So I took two 12 by 12 papers. It comes in a pack, let me show you the pack like this. And for this album, if you're going to make as many pages as I am, um, you'll want a full pack of paper for this album. But this is just the Artisan cardstock. And when you shop, you, I just shop by their collections and go to their Artisan paper and then just get any colors I want. I always stock up. I was, I have about two per color always on hand because I like them so much. But that's what I do. Um, so this is what, um, eight, oh no, nine inches. And this is just by 12. I left it by 12. And this one I just cut down. So this is nine inches as well. Yes, by seven and three quarters. And it might be too long, but I just left it that way for now. And then I just have my um, tear and tape here. This is by Stampin' Up. Um, it's a quarter inch. And so I just put this along the edge here of, um, right along the edge of this paper pack here. I mean, I'm trying to get it by the edge anyway. And then I'll just take my my bone folder here and score. And again, all the tools I'm using are Stampin' Up! tools, and I and I do sell them. So if you guys are interested in any of those, I do sell those. Um, so let me pull this up. Now you do want to, if you don't press it down, burnish it down, then it will, it does make it harder to pull this tape up. So all I'm going to do is just lightly lap, overlap this over here. Just, just enough to cover up that tape. That's it. That's all I'm doing. And then I'm going to, to score this. So you can either use your scoreboard or I do absolutely love my um, 
my cut and my stamp and, tr and trimmer here. I do love it so much. So on one of the ends, I'm going to just score it at one inch. And I really like to do this just to line it up to make sure it's being lined up perfectly. And then along the long end, I'm going to get out my scoreboard and I'll score that again at one inch. My scoreboard for this. And it is too long for it, so I just flip it over. And it really is just, again, this is just a guide. So on the, I have on the one inch here, and then I flip it. And then on the other inch, other side, I'll just do one inch as well. And like I said, this is really just a guide. Whoops, it's just a guide. There we go. And it also does help to fold it when you're when I'm folding it. So I just flip it back over and score because it doesn't really matter. And this paper is so good that either way you score this when you're folding it, it doesn't rip. It's just, I really enjoy it. So, okay. So like I said, all that really is is for a guide. So that when I'm laying down my paper, my, my, my chipboard, it, um, you know, I, I can line it up perfectly. So then you're just going to line up your chipboard like so. so. So you, that's why you have those guides there. It makes it so much easier. It's a great tip, and I did I learned that from Ginger. Um, she's just great at it. Okay, so there's that, and then you just want to leave two sides, two width sizes of this in between, is what you want to leave. So when you're measuring it, whatever two width size is for your, and you can make a shim if you want to. I just eyeball it, and I find it's good. I'm good to roll. So you'll see I have extra paper here, and I will cut that down to um, one inch when I'm done here. That is really all. So then I'm just going to take my score tape and cover the whole sides of this. Um, and you could use, also you could use glue if you wanted. Either it really doesn't matter at this point. Either one. Um, you just want to cover all the sides of it so that it'll stay nice and tight. Do. I love this this score tape or ripped uh, tear tear and tape is what Stampin' Up calls it, but it's the same thing, and it really is handy to have. Oops. And I go through this so much. So when I order my supplies from Stampin' Up, I actually get several. Go order my dimensionals, and I'll order like you know five packs or whatever, and then the same thing with my tear and tape and my um, Tombow glue. I just order quite a lot. I just find that I go through it so quickly and I never want to run out when I'm trying to make something. So it's just a tip if you guys are crafters and you, if you're large crafters like I am, you probably want to make sure you have a bunch on hand because I, I definitely do. I go through it so quickly. I can't believe you just, it's so fast. But I like their tear and tape better than the square tape. I, I do for sure. The only thing about it is they only have one size. I wish they had other sizes. So, but they don't. And so, okay, this is the best size for like the binding system and whatnot. So that makes it really nice. Okay, so there we are. And then I'm gonna burnish these. So, and you burnish that just so that it makes it easier to uh, pull up the t the paper when you do that. So I'm using black because this matches my paper. So keep in mind when you're making your albums that you're gonna, you know, obviously pick the paper that goes with your paper pack the best, whatever you want it to be, whatever accent color. And that's what you're gonna have throughout the album. So your pages are gonna be made with that and your binding system will be made with that. I mean, you can switch it up, but I just, I keep it all the same. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this off. Again, you can use your fingers if you want. I just find it a little easier to use my tweezers. There we go. And so like I said, since I have that score line over here, it's probably hard to see on the black, but I have that score line, so it makes it so convenient for me to line this up and know that I'm getting it nice and straight because it's right there for me to see. So, and then I can just do the same thing with this. Just keep going all the way along. Put this all down. If you guys want to eyeball it too, that's totally fine. Do you? When you're crafting, there's no right way. I really think it's just whatever you like. I was really intimidated to start um, mini albums, 
until I realized how really easy they are. Once you, like I said, once you learn the tricks of the trade, like like what I'm showing you guys now, once you learn how to make the covers and the bindings, you're done. You can make any size book. You just change your binding system to that size. So but I do love making it mini albums. I prefer it over making pocket letters. I don't know if I'm crazy. I just feel like pocket letters are equally as much work and you know, I just think I just prefer the mini albums <laughs> to make them anyway. I like receiving anything, but I just I prefer to uh, to make these. There we go. About there. Okay, and so now we can just cut this off. We can trim it so it's one inch, and then it'll be one inch all the way around. That's what I'm going to do. I'm throw my scraps away. And I'll just get my stamp and trimmer back out. That's about one inch right there. There we go. So then that's trimmed. And then this is where I kind of give it a little folding. Okay, so I just kind of keep pushing it up around, just kind of make sure it's going to be easy enough to fold. I just go right to the edge of the chipboard and kind of push that up. This is what I do. And again, it's been scored on the one side, so I already know it'll be pretty easy on that side. How I, that's how I do it. There we go. And then I use my Tim Holtz ruler. And again, I got this on Amazon, so I, I will link it below. Um, I love this because of the different grid system. I think it's so convenient. And I like to still um, mark this before I cut it, just to make sure I'm doing it even. And I'm sure it's just an OCD thing. I'm sure I don't need to do that. Like I've been making them long enough that I can I can tell. But I love that it has that little M. Um, eighth of an inch or whatnot there, or is it a quarter? It's a quarter inch. So I just put the little line from that too, right? So it matches with this line here and then I just go across. Oops, and I even just move that. Let me see if I did it right. There. And I just go all the way around and do that with all of them. Like I said, once you guys get the hang of this, I don't even know if you are going to want me to show you guys anymore because you'll be like, oh, yes, Tanya, we know. <laughs> but I will do project shares, though, still. <laughs> okay. So now that it's, it's lined, it's super easy for me to cut. And I just cut those all the way off on all four sides. Let's go right around, cut. Cut. doesn't have to be you know perfect because you're folding this in obviously so there's that okay so next then I'm going to go ahead and just take my tear and tape and I'm going to line it on the outside of the flap and on the inside of the of the chipboard all the way around so and I always start with my long sides first and then go to my short sides. It makes it easier so when you're folding it in, especially on the inside here, this doesn't get caught up in that tape. I love to just make these while I'm watching YouTube, actually. That's what I usually do. They're super easy, so. Oops. Just make sure you don't overlap the tape, because, you know, you'll rip it off. Okay, 
so there we are. So then you just take your bone folder and go all the way. And this just again makes it easy for you to peel that tape off. So then you start with, like I said, one of the long sides. I'm just going to start with this one here. And you're going to peel it off of both of them. There we go. And then when you're folding it up, I just start in the middle. Make sure I push these all the way up. Start in the middle. And then work my way out. Taking my bone folder and just really crease this down. This helps it not to rip as well if you're doing this. And then you're going to flip into the other long side. And this really, you can make this album in an afternoon, so it's super fast and quick, as long as you have this paper. And if you don't have this artisan paper, you can use regular cardstock. I just find that this one is the best because it doesn't seem to rip. It just is great. So, of course, if you do rip it, it's nothing that a little washi won't fix, you know. So the only thing on the corners here is you want to take your bone folder and you're going to push it down there right next to that chipboard. So when we're going to go ahead and fold that over, it helps it there to not um, stick out or not to be funny on the ends there. And then we're going to do the same thing when we fold this over. I'm just going to start in the middle and then work our way out. And if we folded that in, it should, it should come to a nice point just like that. There we go. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm just going to use my little bone folder here and give that a good little crease right there next to the those edges. And then taking my tape, peel this off again. Oops, there we go. And then again, we'll just flip that up. And I start in the middle and then work my way out. And this is all going to be lined in the inside, so you don't have to worry about any of that. So I'd like to take my um, my bone folder and then just kind of lightly mark this. We don't want it to rip, so I'm just going to lightly give that a, um, a scoring. I think it just helps it a bit. And then we're going to very carefully just kind of close, you know, fold these in, so we have our book. So there's the bind the cover. And then I will show you guys in the next part, I will show you guys the binding system and um, the pages. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Bye.